Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Software Testing. It's me, Daniel Knott. I'm happy that you're here today. You have seen it already in the title. Today we are going to talk about the following title, which is what teams do without any software testers. Yes. Is this actually the case out there? I think so. And if you would like to know more about it, stay tuned. The show is about to start. Before that, as always, leave a like, leave a thumbs up, leave a subscription. And if you would like to support me, share the video with your network. So let's jump right into the topic. Can teams survive without software testers? So first of all, I think, yes, they can. They can survive. So software development teams without a dedicated software tester in a team can survive if the team or at least one person has established a quality mindset. So at least one person has to have like this attitude or like the passion for, I would like to ship a really great product to the customers. And with great product, I mean with high quality, less issues, and also from a development process, there's something that he or she would like to improve. Yeah. So this person then can start talking and advocating for quality for all the other team members in his or her team. And I think that's already a good start into a team without a dedicated software tester. But of course, there's more. So let's take a look. Hey, sorry for the little interruption, but since I'm talking about software development teams without any software testers, tools might be the right assistance for the teams in a perfect manner. So that's why I'm really proud to present you the main sponsor of today's video, which is Quality Plus, a test management plugin for Jira. With the help of Quality Plus test management for Jira, everything is getting super easy and lean when it comes to test management. You can plan, execute the tests with minimal effort so that teams can stay focused. At the same time, the plugin offers great bug creation and reporting features to speed up the time to market and to support teams without software testers. Installing Quality Plus in your Jira setup takes a few minutes and teams can start directly working on their test cases as well as the overall test management process. The plugin is super easy to use so that also teams without testing knowledge can use it. On each user story, you have access to the test cases of Quality Plus. On the test execution view, you can create bugs right away or assign them to existing issues. Everything is super easy. Quality Plus also offers great reporting features to traceability and to trace down bugs that have been created in the past. So you can get detailed overview of the current state of your quality of your product. So check the video description down below to get a free trial access to Quality Plus today and give it a try. You will not regret it. Also, in case you have no testers in your team, Quality Plus is the perfect candidate or the perfect co-pilot to support all your testing activities to establish a quality mindset in a team without testers. But now back to the main video. First of all, it's a no-brainer. They should utilize developer testing. And what I mean with that is, of course, developers, developers can test too, if they want. I was working with many developers in my career that had no testing attitude, no quality mindset. They were just like, okay, I'm here for coding, I'm not for testing. You're doing testing, I don't care about quality. And from my point of view, that's an outdated, outfashioned attitude and mindset when it comes to modern software development. So everybody in the team should be responsible for quality and also for testing. So developers can do testing. So what can they do? Yes, they can do manual testing. So if you are a developer and you are coding your features down in the uh, IDE, you can start the program, compile it and, and, and start it where and depending on when which ship system it is and start using your own product that you just tested or that you just implemented or so tested. Go through the happy path, go through the acceptance criteria and see if the product is doing what you think it should do. Yeah? Then of course you can do unit testing or they can do unit testing. They should do it. I mean, that should be part of their DNA. They can do, of course, API testing, write automated scripts for APIs, uh, do some, some testing on API level too. Of course, they can do integration testing and they can do end-to-end -end testing if they only want to. And of course, if they have the support from the management and also from product, they have to have the time to, of course, work also on quality aspects. So yeah, stuff they can do. And of course, all of the stuff that they can do in terms of ut utilized developer testing is based on a tech stack 
focus on the most important past. Yeah, that's important. So don't just blindly start. I mean, I, I think I mentioned already a thousand times on my channel that depending on the context, the focus, the criticality and the tech stack, plan your testing activities and plan your automation accordingly. Yeah, so that's important. So what else can teams do without testing? Implement code reviews. I mean, come on, this should be like the default in every team or in any team, no matter if there is a if there is a tester, if I don't know, if that should be it should be given. The moment you have two people in a team or in a company, you can do code reviews. Yeah, just code it, explain the other one like what you intended with the code and so forth, because it's a really great opportunity for talking and learning about the code changes. Yeah, the moment you explain your changes or the, the moment you explain your code, sometimes you have this ah. Now I know I know what to do. Now I, I have found my issues and stuff like that. It's also a great way of giving feedback to others, to peers, to learn to give feedback and to talk about the comments that you have seen or the code that you are uh, reviewing. And overall, of course, it will improve the code quality once you have code reviews. And as I said, that's a given that should be there in every team. Include testing in the DOD and DOD, I mean definition of done. Yes, so define testing in your definition of done. If so if you're a product manager or a software tester or no, no, no software tester in that case, a developer and you're working in, in any way in, in agile methodologies and you have a definition of done, define your testing activities over there. Like what is with acceptance criteria? Who is going to test it? Where and what? Yeah, so these are the questions that you can ask yourself, like what testing must be done? What test be, testing can be done? So is there something that we have to do? Some optional tasks? Also like who is going to test it and where are we going to test it? This is important to note down in the definition of done already. Yeah. So and then of course, once you have established testing and quality thinking in the definition of done, rework and adapt it over time because it might change. Your product will change and also your requirements will change. So that's why important revise the definition of done from time to time. Test automation, what a surprise, yay, developers can do test automation. It's again a no-brainer, right? I mean, talking to developers, they should care about unit test, integration system tests, or however you will, you will call it in your context, in your company, and also in terms of API testing. That's what developers can do, yeah? Again, analyze the tech stack and decide on the testing layer, yeah? The, the, the test pyramid, Think about what is the criticality in your product, in your context. I'm repeating myself, I'm sorry. Analyze it, make a plan, and then according to that, start writing the test automation, yeah? Because automation will help to improve the code quality, if done right. I mean, I've done now a couple of videos also on that topic, like when to start with automation, when not to start with automation, how you can start writing a strategy on test automation. Just check the videos on the overview page on my channel, and you can watch the videos too. Um, of course, test automation provides fast feedback on code changes, which is really important, right? So developers can do some refactorings, they run the automation, still green, all good, we can good to go, yeah? Um, another thing that teams can do or should do is again, a no-brainer is using CI, CD, so continuous integration, continuous delivery with tools. And that's the same like automation and code reviews should be given a no-brainer to have this in every team, yeah? So it has to be the standard on how you build, how you ship your products uh, to your systems. Yeah? Because the CICD pipelines, they help you to build and ship your products faster, also in a more reliable way. It's not like, you know, like a manual stuff. You, because if we do manual things, we tend to forget stuff, especially in, on repetitive things. And if something we can repeat, it's perfect for automation. Yeah? And that's the th uh, same here. And using CI/CD is also great to integrate additional tools such as static code analysis, linting tools, check style, whatever is out there and fits for your tech stack can be used in order to deliver additional quality metrics for your product, which is great. Just at the fingertips, setting it up, run it and then take it from there and have the benefit from it. Of course, Teams without testers can do exploratory testing. It's the perfect thing to do. And again, I made a video about exploratory testing and what tools you can use in order to perform it in your team. Yeah, So it's a great way to in get information about the product that you just developed or that you just planned uh, in your team. Yeah, 
And here's the video that I mentioned. So in, in case you would like to see the video, check the video description or my video channel overview, search for exploratory testing and you will get all the information about it, why this is so important. Test sessions, it's such a great instrument and can be done without any testers in a team. And you only need to know like how the format can look like. And it's so cool to get really good information, good feedback from the product from within the team, from outside the team. It's just great, yeah? Because it's a lightweight activity, as I just said, not only for team members, but also for stakeholders for the whole company. When I was planning test sessions or bug bashes, whatever you would like to call them, uh, in my team, in my company, we usually had like a regular test session within the team before the sprint end and midterm of the sprint development, depending when there was something done. And then also like on bigger releases, we have done that uh, in the company with stakeholders, different departments to get the feedback. And that's cool. Yeah. So I highly recommend you to organize them regularly and then use the feedback to improve the product, not just like collect all the bullet points and all the post-its and say, yeah, we're all good, nothing critical, not really prioritize them, read the feedback and see what you can improve. Yeah. Even if it's like tiny bits that you can improve. Um, another thing is alpha and beta testing. I also, I think I made videos around alpha beta testing um, for iOS and Android apps. So in case you would like to know more about them again, check the videos. So alpha and beta programs are a great way to collect early feedback from users and real users in that case. And alpha testing, for example, can be really well integrated into your company. Depending on the company size, let's assume you have a couple of hundreds or thousands of employees and co-workers, you can establish an alpha community that were there and ask the people like, hey, do you would like to join our channel to test our product in an early stage? And this can be nightly builds, daily builds, weekly, whatever is your, uh, your cycle and ship them to your customers, which are colleagues. So they can give feedback. Then at the next step, you can establish a beta testing community. So with real, real customers out there, handpicked customers, or you can um, implement something within your product that people can opt in for the beta testing channel to get even better feedback on a, on a broader scale. Yeah? Um, one thing to mention or to keep in mind is that the initial setup takes a bit of time no big deal, do it once, run it forever. <laughs> so let's see, do it, try it out. And someone of course has to take care of the programs. Yeah, it's nothing that I just mentioned like initial setup and then run it forever and don't do anything with it because the moment you ask for feedback and the moment you give people early code or early access to something, there will be issues and you have to reply to those issues. You have to give guidance, you have to give feedback, you have to give release notes and all those kind of topics and this might be depending on the company size, depending on the app size and the, of course, um, tester size can be a full-time job. So keep that in mind. But from my point of view, I think it's really worth going that extra mile to get some early feedback. Yeah. Um, another no-brainer from my point of view, monitoring, logging, observability um, must be standard too for every product that you are building without testing and you're shipping to production. So you need to have monitoring in place, logging, to see what's going on outside on the real production system. So to see how the systems behave. Yeah? You can define your own KPIs, thresholds, how fast an API should be, like how responsive something should be, and so forth and so forth. Depending on your context, take the time and define it. And then use alerting in case of fire. So in case really something is going down, you know, the hill, nothing is going well, and it's in the middle of the night or something, you should get an alert. Somebody should be responsible for that time frame, and then should react fast on the things that are going to happen. Yeah. And also really important is that everyone in the team must be able to see the data. Yeah. When I was working with teams, we usually had um, dashboards within our team space and also online on a, on a remote scale to see like, okay, what is the current health of our applications on production systems? And if you don't have access, you you don't know, right? I mean, that's also something that you should really open up and be transparent to everyone in the team, maybe even on a broader scale, on a stakeholder level as well. And that's it. Let's summarize everything we have just seen. So teams without software testers can deliver great products. That's something that you should keep in mind. Of course, from my point of view, I mean, I'm my tester in my heart. Software testers can always add, <clears throat> add something valuable to, to the team, but Teams with a quality mindset can work without testing. Yeah, That's what I said initially. One person must have the quality mindset to have it and to, to plant the seed in the company or in the team to, to grow on that side. Yeah, 
I usually recommend to experiment with different techniques to see what fits. I mean, I now gave like seven to eight different scenarios what you can do in order to improve your quality in your team. Don't start with all of them at the same time. Take it easy, take it step by step, experiment, see what fits your needs. Yeah? And then if you have the chance, talk to testing experts inside or outside the company, maybe attend testing conferences, go to meetups to exchange on these different topics, read blogs, watch videos, and to get more information about quality aspects within a team that you can establish as a software developer or you can recommend as a software tester. Yeah? And with that, we are already end of the video. I hope you really liked it. Um, let me know in the comments, what do you think? Is it a good idea to have teams without testers? Have you seen something in the past that teams were running without software testers while you, for example, were working in a parallel team with testing? Have you seen any pros and cons? I would love to hear your comments on that, your feedback. And as always, like it, share it and subscribe it. Thanks for coming by. See you soon and bye bye.